Alright, hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm going to show you how to farm the sentient ship efficiently. Uh, and you can actually do a lot of runs in the allotted 30 minute time with this method. Now, if you're going to take anything away from this video, it's got to be this tip right here. Now, do not launch the mission from your orbiter. What you want to do instead is launch the mission from your dry dock. The reason why you want to launch the mission from your dry dock is because after you wipe out all the sentients on the tau set, you will regain access to your navigation console even if you didn't finish the other objectives. So this will uh, basically enable you to do multiple runs and as well as just go straight for the sentient ship and avoid all the other objectives. That's going to save you a lot of time. Now for this farm, the team comp we're running is Avara, Atlas, and Necros. Now you can you can run a fourth person probably like Korra or Hydra or something. But though typically I I do this farm in groups of three though it, it's not like it helps you to do it in three or anything like that. Uh, but the way the way this works is Avar pickpockets the enemy and then after she's done pickpocketing she tells her team hey I'm done pickpocketing and then Atlas will use his Orgaze augment and petrify the sentient and then you go ahead and kill the sentient and then Necros will desecrate whatever is left of that sentient. Now for damage I'm using the Paracesis so you could probably get away with like the Redeemer though use it though I found a lot of success using the paracesis now as far as making this a little bit faster is kill the sentience as they spawn uh, you can do some like scouting ahead to look for like uh, symbolists and whatnot uh, though it takes a bit longer and in a mode where you kind of need all the time you can get I probably wouldn't do that and also in one run it actually ended up messing up our spawns uh, to where the enemies just didn't spawn for a solid three minutes but other than that that's basically how you farm for the she do and you could probably modify our team comp to farm for the secret ephemeras in the capture scene that spawns in rare containers on this tile set probably with like what four cores or something with like loot radar to the maximum they make a mad dash for like the hidden operator rooms and blast them open with your amp but that's not what today's video is about all right so for the build i'm running uh, here's the build I was running for Avara in the video, but I actually not recommend this. Now, this is my actual my Umbral Avara build. That's why it has so much formal on it. Uh, but I replaced uh, Umbral Fiber for adaptation. Because uh, Tau damage is actually super, super bad against shields. But since the Sentient's main damage type is Tau damage, it does not get one shot out of just nowhere. I highly recommend you have adaptation, redirection. Now, I have Umbra vitality to give me some extra health uh now this would be better obviously in avara prime because she has way more shields uh so it's gonna be a lot easier you probably wouldn't even need vitality but this is this is part of another build but the one thing i lacked here was range and that's definitely gonna be helpful uh, especially if you have a sentient just floating over the edge so instead of running this build i'd actually recommend that you run this build now in the previous build i had more duration and that's because I was sleeping the enemies, uh, but if you have like uh, Magus Lockdown on your operator, you don't even need the duration. Uh, so if you put like a like another D, you could probably f uh, move this over here and then put a put Rolling Guard just for even more survivability. But all you want here is 40% or higher uh, duration. You want max efficiency to keep your drain to be the lowest it can possibly go. And then you want to stack up on range, but you need positive power strength. Otherwise, uh, your steel chance, now it's labeled here as extra loot, but if that gets lower than 100%, that means that you can actually fail stealing, which means you're going to have to try, and try again at stealing them. Uh, and that that's pretty bad. So let me just show you and now extra loot has gone down to 40% Which means I have a 40% chance to actually steal something from the enemy And if I don't I have to do it again until I actually do and that's that's not a good idea so That's why I'm running so that's why I'd recommend you run this now as far as aura mods goes corrosive projection is nice uh, But I'd probably actually recommend loot detector uh, especially if you're farming the rare containers uh, This will help you spot hidden walls a lot easier And you will have a better chance of getting the two secret ephemeras as well as the capture scene since the rare containers in the sentient Tile set don't actually make the rare container sound. This is what this is what probably what I'd recommend for your Avara It also as it also uses a lot less forma. Now, my for my weapons goes, I wasn't really using the Shidu, uh, except for on the spider enemies, and I wasn't really using my pistol either. The, my main damage source is the Paracesis, and I'm running this build. Now, I could have sworn that Sentience had ally armor at some point, but I guess they switched it, or I just forgot, because 
Eidolons typically use ally armor, but I guess sentients don't anymore. They use ferrite armor, so you're going to want to put corrosive on, because uh, that's what they're weak to. Now, this build is perfectly fine for damage, but I'd actually recommend you slap on Prime Reach here instead of the crit damage. Because uh, since these sentients are floating enemies, you're going to like miss a couple strikes. And that's going to uh, burn some extra time that you probably don't need. And this will also better hit the sentient's arms so they can't shoot anymore. Uh, as well as you could probably put Prime Fury here as well, just for consistency's sake. Uh, though I had Berserker because I, I like my melee going really fast. So yeah. Other than that, Shattering Impact is a must-have. The sentient banes are a must-have to do... A lot of damage to the sentients. Blood Rush, not so much, but it helps if you have, like, you're surrounded by sentients. This this helps out a lot. But other than that, this is what I'm running. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.